Welcome to Electro Online. And finally, in this video, we're going to show you why the position of the couple doesn't really matter. And the point of rotation will always be at the center mass, assuming that this is a bar with the mass equally distributed, center mass right in the middle of the bar. No matter where you put the couple, you would expect rotational motion or rotational acceleration about the center of mass, even when the couple is off-center from the center mass. So here you say, well, how will this bar rotate? Well, it's going to rotate about the center mass, and we'll show you in just a moment why. But first, what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the torque as is by simply summing up the torque of this force and this force together. Notice that in both cases, both forces will cause a counterclockwise rotation, meaning a positive torque. And so therefore, we can say that torque total is going to be equal to the first force times the distance from the line of action of force to the point of rotation. And again, that's the assumed point of rotation, but we'll see in just a moment why that's correct. Plus the second force, which is F, times the distance from the line of action of force to the center of uh, center mass, center of rotation, and that will be D over two in this case. So notice we have an F times D plus one half FD, which is three halves FD. So that is the rotational, or that is the torque that will cause a rotational motion or a rotational acceleration, or what we call an angular acceleration. There will not be a translational acceleration because notice in the y direction, the forces cancel each other out. They're equal in magnitude and opposite direction. In the x direction, there are no forces. So there's only rotational motion, and we propose that it's going to be at the center mass. Although you look at it and go, that doesn't seem right. However, now let's take each of the two forces and do their equivalent force combination. In other words, what we're going to do is we're going to move this force to the location of the center mass of the line of action of the center mass and then we're going to add to that these two forces right here so i'm going to circle them right here so we're going to take this and this force right here and what i'm saying is that this force by itself is equivalent to the same force moved so that the line of action is to the center mass added to that these two forces which form a couple and you can see that th that couple is equally distributed across the center mass. This is the distance d from the center mass to the right, distance d to the center mass to the left. Now, why can we say that? Well, first of all, notice that here, the torque is F times d. Do we get the same torque over there? So what we're saying here is that F times d must equal the magnitude of one of the two forces of the couple, which is F over two, multiplied times the total distance between the two forces in the couple, in that case will be 2d. And notice that f over 2 times 2d is also f times d, so therefore we can say that this force with this couple is equivalent to this force right there. So you can see that this couple will cause the rotation about the center mass, and we see that it's equivalent to that force over there. We'll do the same for this one right here. We'll take this force and move it to, to the location where the line of action goes to the center mass of the board. And then we're going to add two forces which form a couple which are equidistant from the center mass. How can we say that they're equivalent? Well, over here we can see that the torque is equal to the force, F, times the distance, which is D over 2. And that will be equal to the magnitude of one of these two forces. So let me uh, go ahead and circle them like this. So you can see again, so those two now are forming the couple associated with this force. So I take the magnitude of one of the forces. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, I'll go back. So here we have the force times the distance d over 2, that is the torque caused by this force, and now we need to have that equivalent to the torque caused by these two forces by the couple. And so we take the magnitude of that force, which is f over 2, and multiply times the total distance between them. Well, that's d over 2 divided plus d over 2, which is a total of d. And again, you see this is 1 half fd. Again, this is equivalent to that. And so you can see that again, we can take these two forces, which essentially form a couple, move it, move them both to the center mass, have the associated couple equivalency, and we can see that we have the very same 
uh, very same uh, torque caused by the two. Now when we add the two together, Fd plus one half Fd, we get three halves Fd. As you can see that the total torque caused by this system is exactly the same as the total torque caused by that system. We can clearly see that this will cause this to rotate about the center mass, which therefore by default, this must also rotate about the center of mass. So it doesn't matter where we position the couple, it will always cause the object to rotate about the center of mass. And that is how it's done.